How to use DNS on AWS with Route 53. I'm David Staples, that's today's topic, and it's coming right up. So as we start creating all these resources for all these demos here on YouTube or wherever else these videos end up, uh, we know that it's easier to remember names than IP addresses, right? And everyone should hopefully know that DNS is exactly that in the IT world. It's basically a name to an IP address translation or really name to name translation as well. It handles some other things. But at its very root, uh, it was basically created so that I'm not going to have to sit here and remember all these different IP addresses. You know, the, the way that I typically talk about this in some foundational courses is it's kind of like, you know, the contacts list on your phone. Think about how many phone numbers do you actually know for the people in your phone, right? Like, I, I know that I know a few. I know my wife's telephone number. I know my dad's telephone number. I know my brother's telephone number. I'm not sure that I really know that many telephone numbers beyond that. But we remember other things. For instance, I can still remember the Sprint commercial from years ago. It was 1-800-PIN-DROP, and maybe that's telling my age here a little bit. But we remember those types of things, right? Whether it's 1-800-PICK-UPS or call ATT or whatever it is. We remember names a lot better than we remember numbers. So if I wanted to not have to remember the IP address of that little application website uh, that we had set up as part of that EC2 demo, I want some sort of a name to be able to translate to that, right? So on AWS, I'm going to use the Route 53 service. And this is really actually my favorite service name as well. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with Route 66, it's a kind of an older highway here in the U.S. that uh, is very scenic and is a beautiful, beautiful drive. But back to AWS here. So with Route 53, I can e either get to it in the recently visited, which I actually haven't even opened it yet in this new account, uh, or I can come up here to the search box. So we're just going to type this into the search box. And I just have to type in route. I'll click on this. We'll talk about the Route 53 resolver another day. But uh, as you can see, we want to go ahead and get started here. So I'm just going to leave register domain chosen. And we'll come down here and click on get started. We need a domain to use for all these things. I don't necessarily want to make use of my w3geek.com publicly here. So I'm just going to buy yet another domain. Sorry, sweetie. Um, so let's go ahead and look for a domain name. Now, I've already actually searched for one just to make sure that it was available. So I'm just going to go out there and go grab w3w3.org. I think the .net and the .com were already taken. Uh, so this is one that it's a nice short domain. I can easily remember it. I've got w3geek.com, so it's fairly relevant to uh, the other things that I'm already working with. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on search here, and it says, hey, this domain is available. Uh, it is going to be $12 per year to register it through Route 53. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on select and then proceed to check out. And we'll just register it for a year with auto renew and then click on next. And then I'll fill in my contact information here. We'll leave the check mark on there for privacy protection and click on next. And then from here, we can review and submit, make sure that everything uh, looks good. So we'll just pull up the pricing here real quick, just to have a quick look. So essentially, you're going to be paying 50 cents per hosted zone per month for the first 25 hosted zones. We're not really going to be hosting that many zones. So we're basically going to be paying 50 cents per month to host the zone file for this new w3w3.org. Uh, as far as queries go, uh, standard queries are 40 cents per million queries for the first 1 billion queries per month. I'm not anticipating that volume of traffic uh, to be coming to this w3w3.org, but who knows? Maybe it'll turn into something at some point, right? So uh, then we've got various different other options here as far as things that we can use with Route 53. Uh, so we're going to just go ahead and bypass all that for now. We'll talk about Route 53 in a lot more detail in more videos. Uh, but just coming on down through here, we can uh, scroll on down to the bottom and choose that I've read and agree to the Amazon Route 53 domain name registration end user agreement and we'll click on submit. So now it's actually going out and registering this domain, which is a great feature to have in addition to being able to host all the DNS configuration here, right? So we're just going to go ahead and click on check status up here and see where we're at. We can see that currently it is in progress. All right, so the domain has finally finished registering. It's saying that the uh, registration was successful here. So we're going to go ahead and come over to our hosted zones now where we can see that it has automatically created a new hosted zone for us. So let's go ahead and open up that hosted zone and we're going to create some new records. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on create record. And for this, we're just going to start off with our standard, just w3w3.org. Uh, we're going to just use a standard A record. I'm going to come over here and grab the IP address from the server that we set up the other day. And we will paste that into the text box here. 
There we go. Uh, I'm just going to leave the TTL as 300. Well, actually, we'll set it just at one minute, 60 seconds, just while we're testing. Later on, I might come in here and extend that, but I don't want to have to sit here and wait five minutes if I decide to change IP addresses and use an elastic IP at some point. So we'll just go up, tell it to go ahead and create a record. And so now I have w3w3.org should be resolving to the IP address that we had uh, assigned to that EC2 instance when we set it up. Now, in addition to that, some people type in www.whatever into their web browser still, right? So I'm going to go ahead and create a www record. So in here, I'll click on create record. Uh, so my subdomain here is just going to be www. I'm going to instead use a C name instead of an A record this time. And that C name record is going to allow me to point it just to w3w3.org. And I'll set this again for just one minute. Actually, I guess we can leave that as five minutes because that's probably not going to change all that often. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and leave that as 300 seconds and we'll go ahead and click on create record. So now we can say that I've got a total of four records. So we're not really getting, to, getting too far into what DNS is here. Uh, I am just going to point out one more thing here uh, with Route 53 and these different record types. Uh, we do also have this alias record type. So if you're using something like an elastic load balancer or you're using CloudFront, uh, when you use those services, it's actually going to create a DNS name for the resource that you're generating. So essentially that alias record is very similar to a CNAME record, but it's basically saying, I want to forward this over to this specific AWS resource that I've created. So now when we come back to our hosted zones, we can see that here's the four records that I've got. I've got an S record, the SOA record, that both of those were there originally, remember? Uh, we've got our A record and a C name record. So now let's test this. So we're going to come right over here to our web browser uh, and just let's start off with just one by the IP address. Of course, that IP has not changed, so the web server is up there. And then when I come over here to w3w3.org, we can see that it's automatically going to that server. Now, yes, I could go into Apache and configure multiple different domain names for that EC2 instance, uh, and I might do that at some point later. But for now, we've talked about the basics of what Route 53 is. We've registered a domain name. We've created some records in there so that we can actually translate a name to an IP address, and we've seen that it is actually working. So I hope you found this information helpful, whether you are studying for some sort of AWS certification or one of the CompTIA, just Cloud Plus certifications, or whether you are just using this to to really up your own skill set here. But I'm going to leave some information in the description for the video, so be sure to check that out. Uh, if you've got any questions, be sure to leave that in the comments box down below. We are going to be going into a lot more detail with a lot of these services, but again, I'm trying to kind of give it to you guys in some bite-sized pieces, so be sure to click on that like and subscribe button. Number one, it helps me out with the YouTube algorithms, but it'll also help you get notified of when the next video comes out. So in the meantime, thanks for watching. You guys take care. We'll see you soon.